Shoot it down. This was the rallying cry of Republicans all last week after a large balloon identified by U.S. military officials as a Chinese surveillance device was spotted floating over the sky in Montana. Now, after being briefed by senior national security and Pentagon officials, including the Joint Chiefs, and the White House said that the reason for declining to shoot the balloon down immediately was that it would be unsafe to people living below. Now, by Saturday, that balloon had floated across the entire United States and was along the east coast of the United States and ultimately into territorial waters of the United States. And Saturday morning, President Biden said that um, he would take care of the balloon. And by Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, the United States had shot down that Chinese balloon. So all totaled, this balloon fiasco was a major story of the past week around the world, in the United States, and as a guy who spends a lot of time on Twitter, it was all over Twitter. Now, it also turns out that U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken was supposed to travel to China at the end of last week on a diplomatic mission that on Friday, President Biden canceled. So all of this represented a major diplomatic dilemma for the Biden administration. Following his meeting with President Xi Jinping in November, both President Biden and the Chinese president had expressed a real interest in avoiding a new Cold War and in working to improve relations. And in fact, that is why Secretary Blinken was set to visit China. So the result of this violation of U.S. airspace by the Chinese last week means that Secretary Blinken will not be going to China, at least in the immediate future. So clearly the balloon story has captured the attention of the world, and it seems everyone has some opinion on it. From a conflict and negotiation angle, did Biden make the right choice to wait several days and then have the balloon shot down? Or instead, should he have ordered the immediate takedown of the balloon? Or maybe instead, should he have not shot it down at all and simply let it flow back out of territorial U.S. airspace? Today, I'm going to offer my best answer to that question from a negotiation perspective. And if you stay to the end, I'm going to share with you two important insights that should be considered in any conflict situation when we feel our rights, our dignity, our autonomy, our sovereignty have been violated. I'm Bob Bourdon. I'm a senior fellow at Harvard Law School. I'm the founder and former director of Harvard's Negotiation and Mediation Clinical Program. And I love to talk all things conflict and negotiation. Let's go. So question number one, should the president have shot down that balloon as soon as he saw it? Or should he have waited? Or should he have not shot it down at all? Many, including many Republicans, will want you to believe that Biden should have shot down that balloon as soon as it was confirmed that it was a Chinese surveillance device. And their argument was that not doing that shows that the United States is weak or that we can be bullied. But I'm going to disagree with that. From a negotiation and diplomatic perspective, this is a much more complex situation. And in fact, the world is much more complicated than shoot it down or don't shoot it down. And in this instance, I really believe that the White House and President Biden made the right choice. So first, there were some practicalities that really aren't related to negotiation, but that are important considerations when you're thinking about a military exercise. So first, is it safe for the American people, right? The Joint Chiefs had made an assessment that there was some risk that if this balloon were shot down over U.S. territory, that some people on the ground might get injured. And that has to be in the consideration of an American president. Of course, balanced with that, though, is a second question, which is, is there an immediate security risk to the integrity, security, or life of the American people? Now, the answer to that question was definitely not. So when you're thinking about risk to shooting down may kill or hurt people, risk to not shooting down, really none, 
that seems to weigh, again, not from diplomatic, but just from common sense, saying, let's not do this. But there was also another consideration, at least immediately. There was a concern that perhaps the Chinese balloon was actually a trap, that it was designed precisely to draw American firepower and then to get a sense of what was America's capability to shoot this down. Remember, most F-16s fly at about 65,000 feet. This balloon was reportedly at 100,000 feet. Now, there's no doubt that Americans' military power could shoot this thing down. But the question first was to assess, are we giving the Chinese any military secrets or any military information by the very act of taking this down? Now, quite apart from the practicalities, is this really complex negotiation, conflict analysis, and diplomatic question. And here, I want to suggest that the risks of an immediate shootdown were extremely high. Why is that the case? Well, as human beings, we have this tendency that when we are attacked or offended, we can immediately go into this fight mode. And the danger of that is it leads to something called an act-react cycle. In fact, this has been studied, and it's called the accuser-excuser bias. And the idea is that we have this tendency that when we are violated or hurt or upset, we tend to overassume the negative intentionality of the other. That's called the accuser bias. That makes us angry. It causes us to retaliate. On the other side, especially when we don't understand the other side very well, and I would say as much as we like to think so, we don't fully understand the Chinese. But there is this chance that they interpret this and have something called the excuser bias. Yes, maybe we were trying to spy on you, even though they deny that in fairness, but let's assume they're trying to spy on us. But their story is, you're doing that to us too. Your decision to do this is an overreaction, right? So they're excusing themselves. But then they have the accuser bias and they react in an even more retaliatory way. And this is what leads to conflict spirals. And so from a conflict negotiation perspective, we want to avoid that act-react cycle. At the same time, however, we want to avoid another real problem in negotiation and conflict situations. That is that if someone is aggressive toward us and we're in no way provocable, if we don't respond in any way, it sends a signal to them that, oh, we were able to do X, maybe we can do X plus one, maybe we can escalate this. And so what seems like a simple situation ends up becoming very complex and very nuanced. And so the first step here, right, is to avoid the act-react cycle, but then to make sure that there is a response that lands in a way that is understood by, in this case, the Chinese as saying, this was not okay, we will not tolerate it, but we don't want this to escalate. And by waiting a few days, what it allowed us to do is a number of things. First, the decision to keep Secretary Blinken from going to China was a first signal to say, we are seriously displeased with this. I want to note also that the decision was not to cancel the trip. It was to postpone the trip. And I think this makes a lot of sense. And it makes a lot of sense because it's sending this signal that says, we have a lot of shared interests. We don't want a cold war with you. There were many good things that were going to happen on this trip. But this behavior was not okay. So we will wait till a time when it's appropriate, and then we will uh, actually visit. But secondly, it allows during this period of from Tuesday to when the actual balloon was shot down on Saturday, for the United States to do a lot of back-channel diplomatic signaling in a way to allow the Chinese to emotionally prepare for the fact that we were going to shoot this down. So it reduces the chances that they will be super offended and surprised and feel the need to es escalate. In the world of global diplomacy, right, we always want to avoid if we can, especially with superpowers like China and the United States, anything that would be misunderstood and that would lead to a conflict spiral and escalation. The better path here was to be public in the way the United States was in declaring that this was a violation of international law and of our sovereignty, 
to establish, as we did, a clear way of signaling what the violation of sovereignty means, what our response would mean, and then to do all that we can to make sure that the response is calibrated and not misunderstood. So let me say a few more words about the decision to keep Secretary Blinken from going to China. Because while Republicans allowed it that, there were actually some in the White House establishment who disagreed with this decision. From their perspective, not allowing the secretary to go to China was a missed opportunity, an opportunity to confront the Chinese directly about our displeasure for what happened, and an opportunity missed in terms of being able to move forward on some of the broader initiatives that the administration has. Now, I disagree with this. I disagree with this for a number of reasons. Now, we all know that in the end, because on Saturday, when the United States shot the balloon down, that there was no way that Secretary Blinken could have been in China when that happened. But even if that didn't happen, it seems to me the Biden administration made the right choice. And they made the right choice because we did need to signal to the Chinese our displeasure. But like it or not, there were also many domestic constituencies who wanted to see some tangible American response. Now, I want to be clear. I don't think this was done because of Republicans. I think the sense from the administration is that Doing things to placate the Republicans is impossible. No matter what Biden did, it wouldn't have been enough. But I think that there are many Americans not necessarily beholden to Kevin McCarthy tweeting on Twitter who still felt like if Biden doesn't do something, we look weak. So all of this leads to two generalizable lessons that any good negotiator in a conflict situation should be aware of. First, it's incredibly important to be aware of escalation and unintended consequences. Whether it is in international affairs or in our personal relationships or our friendships, it is normal and natural that when we feel offended, angry, pissed off, right, we want to react, we want to respond, we seek revenge, we get emotional. But great negotiators, they need to think several moves ahead. If I do this, what will the other side do? What would they do if I were in their shoes? And if that thing is that there would be a further escalation, I need to hold back. And I need to think about what are my short-term needs, but what are my long-term needs here, right? Is there a real value in blowing this up? Because the reality is it's very, very hard to de-escalate once things are in an act-react cycle. And we all know from countless situations, and certainly the Tyree Nichols one from this past week, that the inability to de-escalate doesn't end well for anybody. So really good negotiators, really good handlers of conflict, they know how to de-escalate, which is very different from being weak or caving in. The second really important lesson here for great negotiators is that they resist the urge to see a conflict and the choices that follow from that conflict in purely simplistic or binary terms. This whole episode of shoot the balloon down or don't shoot the balloon down or send Secretary Blinken or don't send Secretary Blinken, that simplistic thinking doesn't work well in negotiation. It doesn't work well in conflict situations because, in fact, there's a lot more nuance and there's a lot more complexity. And if we're able to take a step back, understand our emotions, expand the time frame, often we come up with a greater, greater range of responses ones that are better tailored to achieve our goals. And in this case, I think the goal of the United States was to send a clear signal that this behavior was not okay, to make sure that we minimize any damage to intelligence that we had, and also to ensure that we didn't escalate and that we continued to find ways to move forward with at least a reasonably okay communication between the United States and China. Because the reality is that our two countries are interdependent and interrelated. The notion that we can just write them off or that they can write us off just doesn't make sense for our own self-interest. So great negotiators, instead of thinking in binary terms, pause and ask, what are the other ways to tell this story? How will the other side see this? What other creative options might exist? And how can we use time, back-channel diplomacy, or other forms of communication to send a nuanced and a clear and appropriate message. In the case of the balloon incident, by resisting the call to shoot it down immediately, 
the United States was able to find a way to signal its displeasure with China. It was able to avoid an escalation and to communicate to the Chinese that we still want to find ways to work with them. And, oh yes, we were able to take that balloon down, right? But we did it without risking any U.S. lives. And after no doubt signaling to the Chinese that we were going to do this so that we reduce the likelihood of a rash or emotional reaction from them. So if you enjoy negotiation and conflict-related takes on all things in our world, be sure to like this video. I'd be super grateful if you would subscribe to my channel. And of course, ring the bell so that you never miss new content. If you want to see another analysis of a recent hot event on the international stage, watch this next video, which is a look at the Brittany Griner situation and negotiation considerations over whether and when to negotiate on behalf of hostages. I'm Bob Bourdon, and thanks for watching. Okay, you know you want to keep watching. Click, click, click. Binge, binge, binge. You know what? You want to learn more about Brittany.